So this is definitely bringing it back old school. But hey, still today, this is one of my favorite dimmers that I could use in the home for doing whatever projects or just whatever type of different dimming or whatever. It's just an awesome dimmer. I still haven't seen them make any dimmers like this for the EU or Australia, whatever. They just seem to be making them for the North America decor style, unfortunately. So, yep, this is that Martin Jerry. I call him the Martin Jerry OG dimmer for, you know, that original gangster. I know there's somebody else named OG, and that is his initials. But it's an awesome little dimmer, and currently they are ESP based. As of the recording of this video, you could even buy them today and they still will work with Tuya Convert, but they are ESP based and you can jig them and you can flash them to Tasmoto or ESP Home with using some little jumper wires because they have the via holes. So there's multiple ways you can do this guy. Now, Martin Jerry, if you are watching this, I know you're going to have to switch this guy soon to that WB3S. I'm hoping you're still going to make this particular dimmer. It's an awesome dimmer, and I know you've probably sold a lot of them because even myself, I bought a lot of them. But you may want to think about doing one with the ESP chip as well. Now, if there's some type of deal where you can't do a ESP12F module under your same company name. Hey, just do like the other guys do and make another company and just sell some pre-flashed Hasmoda dimmers and stuff with the ESP chip. I guarantee you the community will get behind you and buy some of your products. So enough about that. Of course, now you could, if we could still change out the chip, if they do change it at that point, now this dimmer is pretty cool because it is a three button at once. Decora, there is a on and off at the bottom. Now you have the down and the up. Some people don't like the look of this, but hey, it's just kind of that preference. There was another one that was Tessin that it had just three buttons instead of this kind of Decora one. And they just made this to look like their smart switch which still today as well is one of my favorite smart switches. Just due to the button on it, doesn't take a lot of travel. And we can do our, the control, the red and the blue LED on it because it's great for notifications. You can turn the red and blue to, of course, that'll make purple. It's great for doing stuff like, hey, is the washing machine or in the dryer running? I can see that from my bedroom. Or, hey, is the alarm system armed? I can see that with the red or the blue to determine if the alarm system is armed. Different statuses, pretty cool stuff, doing automations, whatever. And they give you those little screwless Decora faceplates for the single game. And great job, they are not branded. They don't have your stupid brand thing on it. So please, Martin Jerry, don't start doing that. We hate that. We just like just regular plain light switches with no words on them. Good job. So if you did want to use this, unfortunately, with the Tuya app, you're not going to find that here. Maybe some other channel down below or somewhere you can go search around for that. Uh, we're going to take this out the cloud and do our thing with it because it's a really awesome switch. There's no secondary MCU to deal with, so if you really wanted to, you can do long press power, long press this, control thing, do double press, single press, multi-press. You can do all the things. It's pretty cool with this dimmer. Now, if you're going to do Tuya Convert with it, hey, I've got a Tuya Convert video, but there's not many products out there, but this one is at as this time of the recording of the video. So, of course, for future because to your convert doesn't always work for everybody if you want to open this guy up i find it is easier to use the ground as kind of has a larger little gap and i just take a metal spudger kind of pry it in there like so and then just run that spudger down the side and you'll hear it pop 
and then I'll run it around the other side and open it up. And if you're really gentle with it, you won't break anything. Just run it around the side, it will pop open. Now when you open this guy, you will notice that the ground is done properly. Unlike some other switches, it passes through, it goes through. That way it would ground any type of face plates or whatever. So do hook this ground up. You never know who's going to come behind you. Now, as of this one, of course, it is the TY E3S. They potentially may have to change the chip on that board. But you, if they did, it would be a real simple transplant. But hopefully, Martin Jerry, it would listen to me and come out with the line with the ESP12F pre-flash with Tasmoto for us. As you can see, there are some small via holes if you really wanted to flash this guy, or you could use that jig that we did in previous videos. There's no secondary MCU, as I mentioned, so it's just pop it on. And of course, you can still do the old school flash thing and solder to it directly and do your thing. It's a pretty cool little dimmer. I love the design of it because it is one of the only ones that doesn't have that secondary MCU to deal with. So we can control all the buttons and do all the things. So real quick, this is my test board that I test a lot of switches. I do have it set up for doing the single switches and double switches or if you want to call those two-way and three-way. And... Yeah, the terminology can get weird with, I don't agree, but that's a whole nother soapbox. I have this set up for if I do a powered bulb, smart bulb that's powered all the time. And no, that's not connected right now. That's this wire here that is disconnected. And then I'll also have this tied into the switch. We will do an initial test. I will do an actual just typical setup with dimming. Probably do some other little videos showing device groups and everything, the power of this dimmer. So I'm going to go ahead and wire this thing up as I would a normal smart switch. So we'll stuff all this in the box. I won't be using any screws because it's not doing anything permanent. And we'll move this over here so you can see. And we will turn the camera light off so you can see the awesome little LEDs on this dimmer. So I know we've shown something like Tasmatizer and Node MCU Pi Flasher and ESP Tool and all kinds of stuff on different videos and live streams. Well, this one's actually pretty cool and stupid easy. So if you are going to be flashing this or anything else, good little tip to you. It's real simple to do. You just go ahead and hook up whatever type of USB flasher and get it into flashing mode, such as doing the GPIO zero thing or whatever you're doing for flashing Tasmoda. And this does support flashing Tasmoda 32 as well. And we'll leave the link down below for this, of course, just as always. You go through, hook up your thing, pick whichever one you want. You can also do the release, or you can do development. And we're just going to pick straight up release Tasmoda. And we'll say do default, hit install. Nothing to download, all straight from the web. You go ahead and pick your USB, hit connect. And it'll do initializing. If you got everything right, you'll see it. Well, it's not doing the boot thing here. So we'll give that a shot again. Hit install. Cross the fingers. There you go. You do have things correct. And it's going to go through the process. And after that, you're pretty much done. You just cycle the power. Unplug. Plug it. Whatever you got to do. And you can use Termite or you can use the access point mode and put Tasmoda and bring it onto your Wi-Fi. Now, if you're using the regular release of Tasmoda, it is going to come up as currently as of Sonoff Basic. Unfortunately, we should would change that to go to just generic. But what that does actually on this particular switch, you'll notice the 
one of the LEDs is lit up. And if you do go and turn it on or off, you can see that actually changes the state of one of the status LEDs. So you probably thinking, well, hey, I gotta go find a template for this right quick. Mm-mm, mm-mm, don't go get a template. As long as you have the full version of Tasmoda, not the light, just the regular full version of Tasmoda. And you'll notice, we're gonna jump to the docs right here, is all you need to do to enable PWM dimmer, and that is, of course, you can see here, is just go pick the PWM dimmer module. So we'll do that right now. If you go to configuration, go to configure module, change it from sun off basic, down here you'll find PWM dimmer. And hit save. That's it, no template. No digging for stuff on sketchy websites or nothing, you're good to go. And automatically, you can see we do get our dimming value right here in the little slider. Of course, you can change the dimming. We can go up and down. We can go higher with it. And of course, we can turn it off. And automatically, you can see it does have the status LEDs showing for you. It's pretty much there for you to roll with. But there is a couple little things I like to tweak on it, such as the dimmer range because yeah, that does differ between the LED bulbs. Now the documentation, there's a ton of stuff in here. PCDM went through and did all kinds of insanity with this dimmer. I'm not gonna go through all the different pieces and parts to this, but there's all kinds of things you can do with this. It's a good little read for the documentation. I'd like to turn on the red LED and no, there's no rule needed for it. You just go do a set option 87. And it's that simple to go in here and go to console. You can either type out set option or you can just do SO 87 space one. That will turn that on. And you will notice when we turn that off, you will get that red LED at the bottom of the switch, which is pretty cool for being able to find that light switch at night. But I know some people don't want that red LED when the lights are off in the bedroom. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is the dimmer range. And like I mentioned, every single LED is just going to be different, even just changing the number of LED bulbs in a light fixture. So what you'll want to do is the, set the dimmer range to the minimum value of what the lowest the bulb will show. And you, but you may have some other bulbs that just kind of suck and they just really turn off at like 40% and then you don't get any scale and it makes it really suck. Yeah, it just, this fixes all that. I actually have it set at dimmer 25 and the bulb is not on. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. I even went to dimmer 40 and it doesn't turn on until dimmer 50. And so that would really suck because you'd have to turn it up halfway before the bulb would actually come on. So let's try a dimmer range 50. It totally changes the scale. Well, now when you come in here and change it, say to 100, you can see it gets brighter. And then halfway is halfway. And then you can go way down, which is you can see that's actually dimmer too. So it's really now half the range, but it takes care of doing all the math for you. And that way you're not, again, changing the functionality of how a dimmer works. In someone's mind, they're gonna think all the way low is the lowest that can go. So that's how you will set that for the, your bulb. And you're really gonna have, just have to play around with your particular bulbs and what you see you like the best for the scale and how linear it may be. And you may find some bulbs just suck at dimming. So if you know some bulbs that are really good, I, these older Cree ones I have, I haven't bought any new Cree bulbs in a while. They, they just lasted several years for me. Definitely shoot us a comment down below on what you found are some good dimmer range bulbs. Now, I know they've done a bunch of stuff in ESP Home and whatever, but now yeah, kind of more on the Tasmoda side for these pre-built devices, especially when we get to the device group stuff. So stay tuned for that. You're really going to be impressed if you haven't seen how awesome device groups and how simple it is to set up and how easy it does some cool stuff. Now, of course, I'll leave all the links down below. 
hopefully this doesn't run out on the stock on the things on the Martin Jerry side. And well, but hey, I'll share some of my cool products that I do really enjoy in my smart home. Those links are affiliate links and the way those do work, you don't have to buy that particular product, but when you click those links, it does help out the channel some part for doing different cool stuff and we do appreciate it. Um, let me tell him something. Uh